December 2009. There was no manual for how you do this sort of film, and we were doing it very differently than previous performance capture films because we went beyond. It's, it's by definition, as exploring a frontier, you're going to make mistakes. We made mistakes, but we figured the door it out. has just barely been opened on what's possible with this. One of the things that I'm always going to take with me is the fact that I was a part of a revolutionary experience in Hollywood. What is going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elliot and this is Movie Files. Today we are discussing a film 13 years in the making. The time has finally come to talk about the sequel to the highest grossing film of all time which was Avatar and today we're discussing Avatar The Way of the Water. I got a chance to see it in theaters and I'm so excited to be here with you all. We're talking pros, we're talking cons, but we're also talking which film was better, part one, part two. What was the theatrical experience like for myself? and ultimately does this film have the same impact that it had 13 years ago we're going to talk about that and so much more in today's spoiler free review but before we get into it if you all haven't already consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell that way you can stay up to date with all my early reviews you can also give your boy a follow on instagram tiktok and twitter all those links can be found in the description of this very video but speaking of this video if you all enjoyed my review today make sure you're hitting that thumbs up make sure you're sharing the review but more importantly once you've seen avatar the way of the water share your thoughts in the comments direction story performances score visual effects what was your theatrical experience like did you see it in 3d for the first time or 2d which one was better part one part two and do you want to see more from this franchise let's talk about it in the comments below so just to address it i'm a fan of 2009's avatar but i gotta admit 13 years is a long time. I was a teenager when the first film came out. So I got to admit, as time went by, I, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I was like, this made so much money, but it's taken so long to make. Who cares anymore? But once we got closer, trailers, teasers, interviews, and I finally got a chance to see it. Did it live up to those expectations? Is this a theatrical experience like no other? Let's talk about it. Starting off with the man himself, James Cameron. Now, for years, he has been getting into some conversations that seem a bit controversial regarding other franchises and their use of visual effects, etc., etc. But can he back it up with his own film? And the answer is simply yes. He has made yet another sequel that, in my opinion, is better than the original in every way possible. The effects and the action were next level, but what blew me away was the story is the heartbeat of the film. It's more personal. The stakes are higher. The emotion is felt and earned, and it took its time in introducing the characters, the locations. Now, for me, what I think made this story better than the original, in my opinion, was unlike the first one, which James Cameron was the only sole writer of the first one, this time he had a writer's room, and I'm going to play you all a quick clip on why he decided to have a writer's room for the sequel. They have a starting point, so I sat down and I just made a bunch of notes for like six months, talking about the world, the characters, you know, trying to fill in like what happened the day after Jake woke up in a in a not V body and I walked in on the first day with the whole writer's room and I plopped down 800 pages of notes single spaced I said do your homework then we'll talk and the first thing I challenged them with is before we start talking about new stories let's figure out how the first story worked what were people keying into what was working for them every idea that we came up with as we went along had to measure up against that standard I said if we can't do that again then we're gonna fail they were like okay <laughs> but we did it I mean now, I, I applaud it. James Cameron for making that decision because it could have been so easy to say hey I got this the first one made a trillion dollars it was my script but the fact that he opened up a writer's room to bring more ideas to expand this universe was a genius move on his part because for me the technical achievements that they're able to accomplish in this film felt so in service to the characters and the world building i felt as though he had more time to build the world and really fine-tune the amazing visual effects and not having to have all this pressure on bringing the story to match the visuals and also allowing other people to have their voice in the room and again having him being such a genius when it comes to world building characters and visual effects he was able to focus on that and what i tell you all right now this is the most visually stunning film i've ever seen 
Which brings us to the conversation, talking about the visual effects and the action. I want to give you all some eye contact when I say that. I want to repeat that. This is the most visually stunning film I have ever seen with these two eyes or four eyes or better yet, my six eyes because I had the 3D glasses on top of my regular glasses. But saying all that to say, not only does James raise the bar on what's possible with the amazing team that he has working on this film, but they manage to make every single scene every single motion seem like it's real and it's such an immersive experience like no other this is the example when people say movie magic this is what movies are made of this the visual palette that they give us in this film again it's just absolutely breathtaking and yes i'm not forgetting the visual masterpiece that 2009 avatar was and even since then 13 years since that film first came out we've been spoiled by Thanos and the Avengers and Endgame and Star Wars and DC, but I'm telling y'all right now, and respectfully saying this to all those artists that work on those films, none of those visually come close to this movie. I honestly felt like I was in an art gallery looking at the most beautiful, unique pieces of art and the scenes of the characters flying in the skies and when they're in the water, the water is the most breathtaking aspects of this film because it's just so immersive. It's just like I was so captivated by what was going on on screen. James Cameron and your, your crew, your visual artists that you work with in this film, congratulations. You guys have accomplished the impossible, giving me just the most visually stunning presentation I've ever seen. Which now brings me into talking about that action. It's not even fair how incredibly in tune James is when it comes to creating action sequences. Of course, this comes from the same mind of the director of Terminator 1 and 2 and Aliens and True Lies. He truly knows how to keep you on the edge of your seat and build suspense and just created one of the most entertaining action moments that reminded me of how much I love going to the movies. It's just visceral action. It's brutal as well at the same time the last 45 minutes will blow you all away because it is non-stop wall-to-wall action. But at the end of the day, none of that matters if the film doesn't have stakes and if you do not care about its characters. Because leading up into the film, going into the marketing, seeing the trailer, seeing the teasers, yes, you can see that they're pushing the envelopes for visual effects. They're pushing the boundaries of what you can do with films. But what's the story? Do I care? Well, for me, it comes down to if you believe in this family that Jake and Natiri have built, and yes, I believe in this family. I truly care for their family and their well-being, and more importantly, their survival. This story does a great job of showing you what it means to protect your family by any means necessary, even if you have to abandon your home or your beliefs or being stripped away from your identity. You see them having to sacrifice a lot because the Sky People mission is to destroy them. You have to be on board with their kids in this one because it's really their story for most of the film and their journey and becoming more responsible and discovering who they are and who they can be that's the reason i think this film is way more interesting than original it's way more complex and emotional because i personally thought the story of the family and their relationships and seeing the fathers and sons and everything building out and protecting one another was the heart of the film and i cared for these characters which brings me into i'm not saying that this is the most complex story out there the sky people want jake jake has to relocate they have to learn the ways of the new home and fight for for the new home it's simple but it's the little things that add up last time i checked it's okay to be simple again i thought that the visuals match the story that we have with the family it doesn't have to be the most complex dense story you have to have with these type of visual effects but again going back to it all having the themes and simplicity and the stories we can all relate to in this huge science fiction universe that james cameron has created which now brings me into talking about the standouts and the performances I really thought that Stephen Lang as the Colonel was so great in this one. He's not as one-dimensional as he was in the first one. They really add more complexity to his character and gave him a meaningful reason to resurrect him. Jake and Natiri were badass and really protective over their kids' lives, which made for some really stressful and intense situations. And speaking of their kids, I thought their kids were pretty cool and pretty complex, and I had a lot of good 
scenes with those younger actors. I think of characters such as their oldest son, Nateum, who was a great young warrior and considered the perfect son in the family. Then you switch over to their second born son, which went by the name of Lolok, who finds himself in trouble a lot because he has to live in the shadow of both his older brother and his father. We have Kiri, who's adopted and has a very mysterious background to the reasons why she was born. And you have characters like Spider, who is a human boy born on Pan Dora and you have their youngest daughter Tuck also really enjoyed the water tribe and their family and Kate Winslet and the, and the dad and their kids I just really thought that a lot of those characters were again the driving force of the emotional weight that we got in this movie which now before we get into my criticisms just kind of pivoting over some other positive things I had to say about the film I can't stress enough how much I appreciated the build up in the film from the first half showing you what's been going on between the two films to them being parents to them having to escape their home and learn the way of the water and it all builds up to an incredible third act and I can't stress it enough y'all which that third act was such a satisfying conclusion the action was amazing and very heartbreaking moments with that third act and to me it justifies most of the runtime and it reminds me yet again that James Cameron is the king of sequels so getting into my criticism I appreciate less focus on the humans this time around, but there were some humans I personally didn't care for. For example, there was a captain of a ship who I thought was just too over the top and felt like they were in a different movie. I'm also a fan of Jermaine Clement, but I wasn't a fan of his somewhat comedic relief and the banter that he had with the captain. And out of all the like the three main plots, which again, you have Jake, his family going to this new place. You have Colonel looking for Jake, and then you have the human stuff. The human stuff to me was like the weird weakest element of this film which also brings me back to Jake and Atiri who I feel were great in the film but they kind of take a back seat at parts of this movie to focus more on their kids which I felt like Natiri's character suffered the most because of that and I'm gonna say it now I feel like this character is gonna be very divisive because I want to let you all know I understand the long game that's being played with this character and I understand the importance of this character within this narrative but I thought the performance of this character was very stale and very flat at points and I'm talking about the character that went by the name of Spider, who again is a human born on Pandora on the human base, which went by the name of Hell's Gate, who was rescued and adopted by Jake and Atiri, which we'll learn in this film. And seriously, that character Spider has some of the worst wine deliveries of the film and felt very inconsistent to the situation they found themselves in. Again, I see how important he was to the story and what can happen moving forward with the character. The character was just very weak. I didn't I wasn't a fan of the Spider character. So before we wrap it all up here, just one more little nitpicks I want to bring up. It's a small little minute thing that wasn't terrible but there's some rehashing some familiar beats within his narrative like for example we have the training sequences of our characters learning the way of the water and our characters like the second oldest son for jake and atiri he gets into this somewhat romantic storyline with the the tribe the water people's daughter and it just felt very similar to jake and atiri kind of having their romance from the first one so, so every now and then there are some very familiar beats from the first one so before we give you my overall thoughts and my score make sure to like share comment subscribe to the channel if you haven't already Overall, Avatar The Way of the Water, its storytelling is better. The action was way more intense and more complex. The world building was so much more layered than the original. The film is visually breathtaking. It's more mature and visceral and incredibly engrossing. The story has heart and ultimately this is movie making at its highest, at its finest. And I'm gonna give Avatar The Way of the Water a- What's going on everyone? This is Elliot just getting back from my second viewing of Avatar Way of the Water. And I just want to interject and change my score just a little bit. Coming back from seeing the film, I will have to say that my positives still stand, the family elements, the heart the visuals fantastic but on my second viewing i do have to say that my negatives with spider and the pairing that they have him with the human elements and there's about 20 minutes that could have been cut out of the film so with that being said on my second go round, i'm going to give this a four out of five enjoy the rest of the review now, mind you, I saw this in 3D, IMAX, 4K. It was stunning to watch, and I'm not one to tell you all how to spend your money, but 
if the means are available. If you have the availability in your local theater or in your local town, see this in the biggest, brightest, loudest theater possible. Spend that extra money if, if you have it uh, available because it's worth it, y'all. It is definitely worth it. And last thing I want to talk about before we wrap this all up, box office. Now, I still personally believe that this film will not come close to the Avatar where it currently stands as the highest grossing film of all time. I don't think this one's going to come close to that for many different reasons, not because the film isn't better, because I do think this is a much better film than original, but there are so many reasons why this film won't come close to it. Streaming, time in the theaters, uh, it's so many factors, but I do think at the end of the day, once it hits its theatrical run, I can see it going, being close to $2 million, but probably tapping out close to one point. Point eight billion dollars at the box office and that's not including like if they have re-releases leading up to three and four and five but as it stands from its initial theatrical in 1.8 is where i'm predicting so with all that being said that's my thoughts on the film share yours in the comments once you've seen it again direction story visual effects how was your theatrical experience where do you think this film will land as far as box office which one did you perform more and i cannot wait for the sequels let me know if you all are excited as well so there you have it i appreciate everything you all watching this review up until this point you are awesome just a friendly reminder before you all leave to like share comment subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell that way you don't miss out on any of my other content i'm thinking about maybe making a spoiler review so keep an eye out for that but in the meantime hit that button come and join the community check out my other movie reviews for this year check out my most recent review and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown